all right, fellows, all right here. I've seen a lot, a lot of discussions in forums and on YouTube about the amount of RAM developers would like to see on the next generation consoles, handhelds and PCs, and they aren't conservative. Upwards of 50 gigabytes, according to some developers, will be necessary to fully leverage the AI capabilities in these new chips, Magnus, Orion, etc. So my question is, will cross-gen be as drawn out this time around as Gen 9 was, considering the AI paradigm shift? Thank you, and to have a great weekend. Um, quick thoughts from me on this one. Uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing 50 gigabyte consoles. I think you've got to remember the whole point of the console, which possibly is less applicable to Xbox this time around. But ultimately, um, a console is about producing a, um, a value-based um, piece of equipment that actually produces the biggest bang for the buck. And memory is expensive, um, ultimately. And um, this is why this generation, we saw, you know, basically a 2x increase in memory over the last generation, which was an 8x increase. Um, as to FOSGEN uh, for next generation, uh, yes, it's going to be the biggest cross generation I think you will ever have seen. Uh, simply because of the proliferation of devices that are out there, um, the continuing importance of PC, and the concept that developers um, and indeed platform holders are embracing the concept of a handheld. Uh, if the specs for the PlayStation handheld turn out to be true, it's going to be basically like a, a cut-down PlayStation 5 in certain respects. So that is going to be, you know, holding back... Um, Maybe holding back is the wrong word, but basically it means you're going to be looking at an increased scalability of devices that's going to be very reminiscent of cross-gen. Um, but yeah, Alex, 50 gigs of memory in a console? Not I likely. Not. Um, I would just hope not because I don't think it would be a, a very price-efficient console like you were just describing. And I kind of do want to stick with my... I said it like maybe four or five months ago, I think I said like 24 gigs as a minimum and maximum. I kind of feel like that is like a sweet enough spot where you're increasing a good deal over the previous generation. And we don't, I don't think texture quality has been an issue right now. And it's just going to get better with all the ML techniques out there and new compression mm -hmm. and da, da, da. You know, it's, I think, I think we're going to see a more efficient usage of memory next gen as well, too. So, uh, I think you don't need to balloon it too much. And I'm, I'm still pretty skeptical about the usage of larger models of AI in games, uh, Maybe Microsoft proves me wrong. I don't know. But uh, at the moment, I don't think you need so much more memory. Right. I'm just thinking about, I mean, a lot of these expectations are from developers, not actual um, development documentation regarding next generation consoles. And I do remember one exchange I had with a developer where they said they wanted from PlayStation 5 um, 8x uh, GPU power of PlayStation 4 Pro. And I, and I just sort of said, excuse me, you know, <laughs> yeah. ATEX, ATEX based PlayStation 5, I can kind of see it and we kind of got that, but ATEX PS4 Pro, no way, Jose. Um, Oliver, what do you think about this? Uh, huh? Yeah, th this whole question. I think that all these comments about 50 gigabytes of RAM being necessary maybe come from people who are not super up on the state of the art at the moment because modern ai models at least many of them are very very heavily optimized you can fit an lm that works for a lot of purposes into like a gig or two nowadays you can fit a voice synthesis model into a few hundred megabytes you can fit you know an ai upscaler like pssr you know into a small amount of memory as well like 256 megabytes or 200 megabytes or whatnot um, now there could be an exception to this. Like if someone creates some crazy AI video model, some like genie model for real time graphics, you run it over game logic and you have this crazy game experience. Maybe that would require an enormous amount of memory. I have no idea. Something like that has not been yet invented, <laughs> but perhaps that will come about. But absent that, um, you know, these uses are not very memory intensive. And I'd venture that with, you know, various enhancements, the texture compression, perhaps you would end up with a, a reasonable amount of AI capabilities, even if you only had like 24 gigabytes of, of RAM or something similar. 
Um, and of course, some of these uses don't require real-time speed and could be cloud-based. Indeed, you'd probably expect they would be cloud-based uh, if they had to have some interoperability with last generation consoles like a PlayStation 5, which cannot meaningfully accelerate. But I think that uh, for in terms of the cross-gen stuff, the cross-gen will last a very long time. The common hardware will be something like a PS5 or maybe a PS6 handheld. There will be a lot of cross-gen titles out there, I think it will last all through the, the end of next generation, I would expect. <laughs> and I think games will be more scalable than ever because, you know, you have the new handhelds coming out nowadays. You have like everything from a Van Gogh chip to like this PS6 chip reportedly, this PS6 handheld, and you have last generation consoles in the mix. Maybe, you know, the Xboxes get dropped at some point, but certainly PS5. I mean, there are like 80 million PS5s out there. Those aren't being dropped anytime soon. Games have to reach a massive audience in order to recoup their budgets. I don't think cross-gen is going away anytime soon. I, th I imagine it will be a considerably longer than the cross-gen that we had between, say, PS4 and PS5.